The last time the Cleveland Cavaliers made the playoffs without LeBron James on the roster was in 1998 when Sean Kemp was on the team. In the six seasons played without LeBron since 2003, the Cavaliers have finished higher than 13th in the conference just once. This team is just trying to find a way to move on and be competitive since that guy left in 2018. Last year was certainly a year to forgive for the Cavaliers. Their star player Kevin Love grew frustrated playing with such a young team and their new head coach John Beeline didn't even last a full season before he figured out that coaching on this level is not his thing. After missing 60 games due to injury in 2018-19, Kevin Love was hoping to bounce back and prove he can be the Kevin Love of old by being the focal point of the offense. The team expected big numbers from Love under new head coach John Beeline. But soon Love came to realize how much of the roster was filled with young guys who were still learning how to play the right way. Being a big man in basketball, you have to rely on the perimeter players to give you the ball, and there are a lot of young guards on this team who aren't known for their passing. There simply isn't enough good passes on the team to keep Kevin Love involved. The five-time All-Star signed a four-year, $120 million contract extension two years ago to help move the team in the right direction. Whether you want to mostly blame Kevin Love or the team around him, the Cavaliers have been a disaster in the last two years with little to no progress made. To be real, at the age of 31, Kevin Love is not capable of lifting the players around him. This team was 19 and 46 and finished dead last in the Eastern Conference. They finished in the bottom five in offensive and defensive efficiency. Before the season was suspended, the Cavaliers did end the season on somewhat of a positive note when JB Bickerstaff took over for Beeline and Andre Drummond came over in a trade from the Detroit Pistons. Under J.B. Bickerstaff, the Cavaliers went 5-6, and six, picking up wins against playoff-bound teams like the Nuggets, 76ers, and the Heat. This team finally got some real size now with the acquisition of Andre Drummond, a guy who is an elite rebounder and a walking double-double. He can initiate the offense from the elbow and is a good finisher in the pick and roll. Drummond gives them a piece they've been missing for a while now and has the talent to make them better. But how much better can he make the Cavaliers? Everyone can agree that his salary doesn't match his impact on the team. A player like Clint Capella has just as much impact, if not more, and he makes half of what Drummond makes yearly. This team is picked in the top 10 in the draft for three straight years, and two straight years in the top five. Drafting two point guards in the top 10 isn't the craziest thing in the world, just as long as they complement each other for the most part. Let's just say the combination of Darius Gall and Colin Sexton hasn't worked out in the backcourt. Both are undersized guards with a scoring mentality and limited passing skills. Colin Sexton is what he is, a scoring machine. Nothing more, nothing less. Expecting him to turn into a capable lead guard who can run an offense is unrealistic. He led the team in scoring averaging around 21 points per game, shooting 47% from the field and 38% from three. His three-point shooting is actually much better than NBA scouts expected, but at this point, Scoring is literally the only thing he can do. Garland has way more potential to become a better facilitator than Sexton, but that's not really saying too much. More importantly, having both of these guys together defensively is a complete disaster. Neither are good individual defenders at this point, and their size make them an easy target for opponents. Combine their bad defense with their lack of playmaking together, and you have a bottom five team in offense and defense. The Cavaliers will have to make a decision on which guard to start. It shouldn't be both. You can't expect a player like Andre Drummond to cover for the perimeter player's mistakes. Starting a player like Matthew Della Vadova or Kevin Porter Jr. at the two guard spot should be the way to go. If Kevin Porter can stay out of trouble and keep his head on straight, he could be a really good player in this league. He has the size, athleticism, and skill set to make a big impact for the Cavaliers on both ends. His ability to explode on offense, along with his good effort on defense, should make him an easy choice to start in the backcourt. I don't believe the Cavaliers could have made a more perfect selection in the draft this year than Isaac Okoro. With the Cavaliers offense heavy guard lineup, the team needed a player who was more known for his defense than anything. Okoro is touted as the best wing defender in the draft class and should help immediately for a Cavaliers team that ranked 29th in defensive rating. Nobody's expecting too much offensively early on from Okoro. Much of his scoring in college were at the rim and in transition. 
Chetty Osme has been average at best for the Cavaliers. Starting a Coro at small forward from day one shouldn't be a hard decision. He will help you win games more than any other small forward on the roster. He has an NBA ready body and will bring defense and toughness to a team that doesn't have that much of it. They added more size and length with the addition of JaVel McGee and Thon Maker. And they will help protect the rim better and they bring much more athleticism to the big man position. This will be the first full season for head coach JB Bickerstaff. Even though it was a small sample size, the team did respond better and played better under him in the last 11 games. There's no denying that the Cavaliers have talent on their team. It just may take a great coach to put them in the right position to maximize their talent. Bickerstaff maybe could be that guy or maybe not. I believe this team will make some progress this season, especially compared to last season. But will it be enough to consider this season a success? If success for the Cavaliers mean competing for a playoff spot, then no. There are much more talented teams in the East with rosters that fit better than the Cavaliers. I have the Cavaliers finishing in 13th place with a 23 and 49 record. I don't believe their defense will improve enough this season with Drummond to be able to compete night in and night out. They need to end the Garland and Sexton combination in the backcourt. Until they make significant strides on defense, they should not be on the court together for long periods. Andre Drummond will put up all-star level numbers, but just like in Detroit, his stats will not reflect the impact that it should. 